and no, you're stupid, you're dumb, and you're stupid. So I've always been pretty bad with all of the popular things that you could consider self-care. I can't remember the last time I put a face mask on, can't remember the last time I painted my nails or took a long bath. Because for me, taking care of myself was this really big idea of productivity where if I was studying my butt off and still uploading YouTube videos, I was taking care of myself. Until one day, I was talking to my boyfriend exactly about how I felt about self-care. Yeah, babe, I just don't see a point in like taking breaks while you're studying because I just want to be productive. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, so you just want to be productive. When you take care of yourself, and no, it doesn't have to be a face mask, you can actually be being, be being, you can actually just be more productive doing other things that aren't work, then you would be just doing work. So basically today I'm just going to be trying to show you how I've been taking better care of myself, aka being my own best friend, because being a friend is taking care of you mentally, physically, and spiritually or whatever, and I just want to share some tips just so that you can start this week in a fresher way. So welcome to my how to be your best friend video. Subscribe, give this video a like, Comment something down below and let's get into the journey of an 18 year old that has no idea what she's doing with her life but still tries to give advice to a 4,000 subscriber audience. Okay, we're starting very cliche but that's just because I know when you hear this you're gonna know that you don't do this and you need to start doing this right now. Just feel your feelings. I can bet all of you have already heard the phrase that all feelings are valid and it just makes me want to throw up, but at the same time, it's pretty true. Now, not all feelings will make you feel like you're very adult and mature. Some feelings may make you feel like you're so wrong for feeling that, and maybe some feelings just aren't wrong. But at the same time, all feelings are valid, and at least for me, one of the big mistakes I've ever made in my life was just not wanting to feel sad or not wanting to feel any type of negative emotion, and so I would just push and push and push, and then just completely break down in a random occasion because I just thought that feeling sad was unproductive. Like, I have a problem and this is literally the most nerdy thing I could say, but that was just how I saw things. Being sad would just make me frustrated because I was like, I have things to do, I can't afford to be sad right now, I need to keep going. So whenever you're feeling a stronger emotion, just give yourself time. And that time could be five minutes in the end of the day where you're feeling anxious and you just need to sit in your bed, close your eyes without any phone in your hands and just breathe. Or that could be taking a whole day because your week was so overwhelmed or your month was so overwhelmed and you've gotten bad news or good news and you just need to like feel it. One of the phrases that I've heard in my life that made most sense to me was that phrase that basically says life isn't about where you get, it's about how you get there because the truth is a lot of us live focused on our goals. We want to achieve this. We just forget that, okay, that goal is what motivates us and it's the reason why we work hard, but when you reach the goal, that's gonna last like five seconds or five minutes. What is more important or equally important is how you get to the goal, it's a process, it's living your day-to-day -day life. We need to be present for ourselves because we're so surrounded by like phones and social media and screens and stuff. Nowadays, it's just really hard for you to just sit and just be with yourself without any distraction, but that's very important and that's a big step for me for taking care of myself. And so for myself, just when I realize that I'm sad, I'm frustrated, something is going wrong, or I'm happy, I've just been trying to feel that instead of just being like, okay, whatever, let's just keep on with my day. Feel your feelings. Okay, the second thing, and you know, if you've seen my videos, you know that I'm very practical. Sit down. And like actually do this like i know most people just watch these videos and they're like oh this is such a good hack and they don't do the hack and they don't do what the person is saying and like please do this because it really does help and it might sound stupid but it helps make a list of things that you like about yourself and things that you don't like about yourself and then 
Make a list of behaviors, actions, habits, whatever that you can do to keep doing, being, slash, whatever the things that you like and fixing the things that you don't like. And there are two ways, two ways that you can fix the things that you don't like. Two ways. Maybe there's more, but I'm just going to speak about two ways. First of all, you fix what you don't like. Get yourself together and you do something to stop what you don't like, to change it, to grow it, to whatever. Or you just accept it. And something I've learned is that complaining just feels good. You were humans and we like complaining. Hello, I'm Maya and I'm part of the 7 billion population that likes complaining. When you are complaining, you're either complaining about things that you can change or complaining about things that you can't change. If you're complaining about things that you can change, either go and change them or shut up, or you're complaining about something that you can't change. Do you realize how much time certain people spend complaining about things that they cannot change that aren't in their control, so there's literally nothing they could do, but they're still deciding to spend their time complaining about something that they can do nothing about? So basically what I'm trying to do with this is that we all have things that we hate about each other. We're pretty open about them. List like the main 10 things that annoy you, that you hate the most, and then decide if there are things that you are willing to put the time and effort to grow, to change, to modify, to better, or if there are things that are kind of stupid or not that important to care about and that you just want to work in accepting. For example, maybe you hate a certain physical feature about yourself, that maybe you can't change or you could like with plastic surgery but you're not going to so maybe that's something that you need to work in accepting i know this is very hard and i'm not here today to tell you how you should accept your hip dips or your small boobs or whatever because i have done a video where i am actually i've done three videos about body image it's called I don't have boobs and it's a pretty good video, go watch. Maybe something else that you don't really like about yourself is the fact that you are bad at keeping contact with your friends. So maybe something you could put in the list is having a weekly Zoom party with my friends or calling my three best friends every Sunday night. I know complaining about something and hating on ourselves is much easier than actually sitting down and doing something about it. You're either hating on yourself because you're just mean and it makes no sense, or you've just haven't given yourself the time to actually do something about it. And this is your sign to do something about it. And if you want to be even more extra with this list, ask your mom, your sister, your boyfriend, your friends, what they think what they like the most about you and the least about you. I think this is also a great exercise for like strengthening your relationship. The third thing that is essential um, for you to be your own best friend is to put yourself in an outsider perspective. When we're trying to help ourselves or figure something out and we don't put ourselves in an outsider perspective, chances are we'll be a lot more emotional and not think as straight as we would if we literally thought of us as like a friend and be like, what could I do to help that friend? Pretty much every single person in this whole entire world is better at giving advice than at taking the advice and actually doing something with it. Hey Bethany, what would you do if you were in my situation? Um, I don't know, eat my feelings with Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream? Give yourself like a random name and be like, Hey Bethany, this is my advice to you. You should eat a banana every morning because bananas are full of potassium and that will give you the energy you need to get off with your day. And if Bethany really existed, Bethany would be like, Great advice, Maya. I'm going to do that. Thank you so much for helping me. And Bethany wouldn't do that. Bethany is too lazy to do that. But because Bethany is yourself, the same person that said the advice is the same person that took the advice. So you're really there to inspect Bethany to see if she's eating her banana every single morning. So because you're like two people at the same time and you're giving advice to yourself even though you were in an outsider perspective, it has a bigger chance to work, you know? Help your interior Bethany and put yourself in an outsider perspective because that helps a lot when you're dealing with your problem. Fourth tip, self-awareness. If you want to be your own best friend, you need to know who your best friend is, which is yourself, but you need to know yourself. I think people would be surprised to realize how little they know about themselves because we're constantly just asking questions to other people, spending time with other people or doing things, but not like actually chatting or talking to ourselves or thinking with ourselves. I'm not gonna tell you for you to um, journal. Even though I'm telling you that you should journal. 
But I am going to tell you to spend some time alone. Just picture the scenario. You leave your phone in the living room, your iPad, your everything. You go to your room, you sit in your bed, and you will look at your blank wall for 10 minutes. And I promise you, some thoughts will start coming into your head. And those thoughts might be, what am I having for dinner? But those thoughts could also be, what am I doing with my freaking life? I just feel like I am literally talking to a camera. And for some reason, I think I'm funny. But then I think that people will actually see this. And then I feel like this is torture to people. So then I go into the editing and I cut all of my jokes because they're so bad. Put your lights on, make some popcorn, and just gossip with yourself. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations that hurt us and that are really bad for us just because we didn't really took the time previously to ask ourselves what was our position on certain subjects. Like, what are my boundaries? What am I not willing to accept in the friendship? What is my position with drugs or alcohol? I don't know, this is getting really deep, but there's a lot of things that sometimes we do that just could be prevented if we took the time to actually think about them and trust ourselves and make commitments with ourselves because we're so used to asking things to other people and not actually speaking to ourselves. If we realize sometimes we don't have a fixed opinion because we just hear a bunch of stuff and we form these thoughts that we didn't even remember we formed and we act upon them but we never actually thought about them. Then last but not least we have the fifth tip that is compete with yourself. I've heard this like recently which was like the concept of instead spending so much time trying to compete with a just spend time trying to compete with yourself. It's much healthier. We all have different backgrounds, different circumstances, different brains, different bodies. So in certain things, there is literally no point in comparing or trying to compete with other people. So the best thing that you could do is try to do your best. So for example, if yesterday you did 30 crunches in your workout, try making 35 instead of trying to make 200 after you literally just made 30 yesterday because you saw youtuber that does 200 there's nothing you really need more than to be better than yourself because if you keep being better and better and better than yourself you'll eventually get maybe to where you would want to be but in a realistic way anyways being your own best friend and taking care of your life is all about accepting the past and working in the present so that you can have a bomb future we spend so much time just overwhelmed with a bunch of things and information that is like around us and sometimes we just need to take a step back and spend some time with ourselves there's nothing better we can do to improve our lifestyle than to get in touch with yourself you deserve to work hard for your goals because you deserve to achieve your goals so stop trading yourself stop saying that you're not enough stop saying that you're not pretty you're not intelligent that you're stupid because even if we're all stupid saying that we're stupid won't leave us anywhere so i really hope that i could help at least one person with this video and um i'll see you in my next one bye